Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and I've just got back to my garage after doing half a day at work and I'm hoping to do a couple of jobs on Maud, my 2 litre Z-Tech powered Mark II Escort. Now it's freezing cold, it's starting to rain a bit and I've only got a few hours left of daylight so I'm going to stop talking and crack straight on with it. In my last video I mentioned that I bought this rocker cover for the car which is from an earlier silver top Z-Tech engine. Now these are metal rather than the plastic ones that are on the black top and I'm hoping that this will cure my oil leak problems. The new gasket and the new bolts have now been delivered so the first job of the day is to fit this to the Mark II. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to fit this to the car, it's a really simple job and I've already covered it in another video that I did last year. If you want to see that video you can do using the link at the top of the screen now. One thing worth noting, if like me you are putting a silver top rocker cover on a black top engine, you will need the silver top type gasket and the silver top type bolts which are a bit shorter. The other difference with the silver top rocker covers is that they use these rubber o-rings which go into here and then your bolt goes through it like that. So I've got the rocker cover on. I have noticed a bit of an issue with these non-Ford rocker cover bolts though. They seem to be chewing up these rubber O-rings quite bad. And it looks like the washers could do with being slightly bigger. I've got to go to my other garage tomorrow. I'm going to take this one with me and hopefully I'll be able to get a washer that is exactly the same diameter as this. Obviously it can't be any bigger than the rubber o-ring because it needs to be able to sink down into that recess but I think these washers that came with these bolts are just a little bit too small and they're just chewing up the rubber o-rings when I'm doing them up. I'll sort that out tomorrow. Now there is one other thing I want to have a look at today before it gets dark so I'm just going to pull the car out of the way. So this is the Type 9 5 speed gearbox that I picked up in my last video. I won't be fitting this for a few weeks. I'm not going to be completely rebuilding this gearbox but there is a couple of things I want to do before I fit it to the car. So the first thing I need to do today is get the clutch fork and the release bearing off and then remove the bell housing. Now Sean, the bloke I bought this gearbox off, assured me that it had no winds and no leaks and it ran fine. But as a precaution, I've gone and bought myself a gasket and a seal kit. Now some of these gaskets can't be replaced without stripping the whole gearbox down and I'm not going to be doing that. But there are a couple that you can do without stripping the whole gearbox down. So I'm going to concentrate on doing those ones. Now this cork gasket here goes behind this cover in there and it's really easy to change. And this seal goes inside here somewhere as well. Also really easy to change. And I've actually had leaks from this part in the past. And it's really annoying to have to take the whole gearbox out just to change that gasket when I could have easily done it before I put the gearbox in the car. So that's what I'm going to do this time. Another place that I've had a leak from on these gearboxes is here. Now this is where the speedo cable attaches to. And there's a little rubber seal in there. Again, really easy to change with the box out of the car, but not so easy 
with it in the car. So I'm going to change that before I fit the gearbox as well. In the rear end of the gearbox, where the prop shaft goes, there's also a seal. Now, these can be changed with the gearbox in the car, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to bother changing that one or not. It's going to be getting dark soon, but I'm going to crack on with getting this cover off. Hopefully this seal should just pop out pretty easily. It's breaking up. I don't really have loads of tools at this garage, this is just where I store my Mark II overnight. Hopefully I'll be able to get this out. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this indoors with me and see if I can get this seal out. If I fail to do it tonight, I'll be able to do it at my other garage. I've got more screwdrivers and stuff there. Right, it's starting to get dark around here now, so I'm going to pack up and go indoors. Don't go anywhere though, I'll be back in just a few seconds. Good morning. Shortly I'll be going back around the garage to continue where I left off yesterday. But first, I need to make a little trip to screw fix. I'm going to go down there and pick up some multi-purpose grease. And while I'm there, I'm going to see if I can get some washers to solve the issues I was having yesterday with my rocker cover bolts. So last night, I managed to get the old seal out of this clutch release bearing cone thing. Just got to put the new seal in and I can fit this back to the gearbox. Let's take Winston, the plastic Fiesta, for a rip. What a beast. Right, so I've got a couple of packets of washers from Screwfix. Uh, one pack looks like exactly the same as what I've got, and the other pack looks like the washers are gonna be too big, so we'll see how we get on. But I've got the multi-purpose grease, so at least I can uh, put the gearbox back together. Right, first thing I'm going to do is make sure there's no remaining gasket on there. There's not much on there to be fair. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is put the seal back into here. Just put a little bit of grease on it. Help it slide in. Not sure if this will press in or whether I need to use a socket and a hammer to bang it in. We'll see. That's a seal fitted. Ideally, you should use a socket that's exactly the right size because uh, you need to drive this in really evenly. I've just used this one, what's a bit small, but as long as you do it really gradually, bit by bit, it's okay. It's all the way down, it's in there evenly, so yeah, that should be sweet. Right, so now it's time to fit this back to the gearbox with the new gasket. Now there's a hole here which I assume is where the oil comes out of to lubricate this bearing and there's a little groove in this gasket here so just got to make sure that goes that way. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of this Loctite flange sealant. Just 
a bit of grease in there. Another tiny smear of flange sealant on here. And again, there's a little groove here, which I'm assuming lines up with that groove that I just showed you in the gasket. Let's just slide that on. And then stick the bolts in. Now I read online that these bolts are only supposed to be done up to between nine and 11 Newton meters, so do it with a torque wrench, keep things accurate. I'm gonna to go to 11. Obviously just do it up in stages, don't do one all the way and then do the others. All right, so that's that all back together. And now I feel a lot more confident that that bit at least won't leak any oil on me all right so i'm going to have a look at changing the speedo cable drive seal now now to do that you need to remove this cap from the other side and then the speedo drive should be able to be pulled out from this way and then the seal will come out the other side and then you just pop the new seal in put the drive gear back in and then put this cap back on and some people will literally just hit the end of this with a hammer and pop the cap out the other side that way but the speedo drive inside there is actually made of plastic so I don't want to risk breaking it so I'm just going to try and lever this off with a screwdriver Let's try the other method. Now, after a lot of grief, got the cap off. I can see some blue sealer on here, so the Speedo drive seal has definitely been changed at some point. But you just never know, so it's always best to just change them out yourself so you know they're fresh. Now hopefully I haven't damaged this plastic speedo drive gear when I was trying the hammer method, which failed. Alright, I've got the speedo drive out. It does look a bit mullered in the end where the cable goes into. I may just use the one that's already in the box that's on the car. I need to get a new one of these anyway before I can fully put it all back together but these are really cheap and they're available so that's the old seal out Alright, and turn my attention back to this rocker cover. And these are the two sizes of washers I bought from Screwfix. And this one's definitely too big, that ain't gonna work. And the other ones they sold me are pretty much the same size as what I had already. Now I think if I make sure that these O-rings are fully pressed in to their recesses before I do the bolts up, it might not chew them up as much. So I'm gonna try that. I'm going to go to my other garage later, I'll see if I've got any other washers that are sort of somewhere between these two. Um, if not, I can always nick the original Ford ones off of the Mark 1, because the ST170 uses the same style of bolts. So one of the O-rings is completely destroyed. 
So this will have to wait until the morning. I'll replace all these bolts for the Ford ones that I'm going to go and pick up from the other garage. Right, I'm going to end the video here. Really glad that I changed those couple of seals on the gearbox. Still got to order the cap for the speedo drive, but it's going to be a few weeks before I fit the gearbox to the car anyway. And there is actually one modification I want to do to the Titan Arm before I fit it to the car. Real shame about the bolts for that rocker cover. Hopefully, changing to that metal rocker cover will cure all my oil leaks. If you've got any ideas of anywhere else where the oil could be pissing out from, though, down the back of the engine, do get in touch either via the comments or via my Facebook page or my Instagram. And the links you need for that will be in the description of this video. I will be changing the rear crank seal when I do the gearbox job anyway, which is obviously another place where the oil could be coming out of. As always, if you thought this video was any good, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it was shit, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe and activate the notification bell to be kept up to date with any other videos that I post in the future. Until next time, thanks for watching.